Hey everybody, Desi Cooney here with Outlier Strength and Conditioning. Different setting today for today's video. I wanted this to be just more of a talking video. And I wanted to go over today the top deadlift accessory movements. And we kind of want to break down a little bit of what that means. So firstly, two caveats here. Uh, number one, this is going to be highly dependent on a lot of factors such as your personal weaknesses, uh, your experience level. So for example, beginners don't necessarily need to be working on their weaknesses yet when they haven't developed anything, any semblance of a strong point yet. So right, they might not even need to be doing any accessory type of training. And as well as your style or your stance for your deadlift, sumo or conventional, as well as your intention. So are you going to be competing? Are you just trying to build muscle, et cetera, et cetera. And then caveat number two, just for this video, um, this is highly dependent on terminology as to what an accessory is. So every strength coach um, or any kind of coach really kind of speaks a little bit of their own language. Um, and so these terms get thrown around here and there like supplemental exercises, auxiliary exercises, you know, accessories, et cetera, et cetera. So I want to clearly define what I mean when I say that, but then I'll give you examples of each category just so that this is more all encompassing when you click on this video. So I'm just going to use one set of definitions here and I'm going to say primary, secondary, and tertiary exercises. So your primary exercises are just your competition movements. So in this case, for deadlift, it's gonna be your competition deadlift in your competition stance. And really, we'd be talking about loading maximally for a single. Um, but we can extend that to mean your competition movement in general would be your primary exercise, which we would expect to have the highest degree of carryover to the results on the platform if you are competing. So as a beginner, this is probably the only exercise that you need to be concerned with is learning how to deadlift, doing it well, and doing it often for a good amount of volume. Um, but there will come a point for most people, and at least in most systems, where just doing your primary movement, your competition movement, isn't going to be enough to bring up your weaknesses. So for example, with squatting, um, I've said this in previous videos and stuff like that, but if you have a really bad hip shift, you're not going to solve that just by squatting or if your quads are sort of lacking compared to your back and your posterior chain because of the way you squat then squatting isn't going to grow your quads enough that they won't be your weak point anymore um, so eventually there does come a point where you're going to want to include some of these secondary and tertiary exercises for a number of reasons you know attacking your weak points bringing up um, the muscle groups associated with that lift um, health and longevity of the joints involved, et cetera, et cetera, even novelty, for example. Moving on to secondary exercises, these are basically, in my book, they're close derivatives of the competition movement. So if we imagine um, your primary movement as being comprised of however many boxes, you know, so um, deadlift, you know, bilateral, hinge dominant, my glutes, hamstrings are involved working in this way, my lats are involved in, in this fashion, you know, sort of isometrically. Um, here's the direction of force, here is the velocity, here is, you know, the force. We would expect a secondary exercise or a close derivative to check a lot of those same boxes because it's a very, again, it's a very close derivative of the competition exercise. So we'd expect it to have a high degree of carryover to the primary exercise, and this is a principle known as dynamic correspondence. Um, so some of my favorite secondary exercises for the deadlift, for me, if I had to pick three, would be pause deadlifts of both variations. So if you're a sumo puller, pause sumo. <clears throat> if you're a conventional puller, pause conventional, although those are a little bit of different exercises, um, usually done with different intentions, they're both probably top my list. And then I would say number two would be deficit deadlifts. And again, this can be done out of both stances, but I pretty much solely do it out of uh, conventional stance. 
And this is just a great one for building speed off the floor, building um, your lockout because you're sort of pre-fatigued almost by the time you get there. And just because it's a larger range of motion than the competition lift, you have a less advantageous starting position and you're potentially stimulating more hypertrophy just because it's a bigger range of motion. And then number three, I would say some kind of a pure hinge movement. So this could be an RDL um, with various stances, usually done with a barbell if we're still classifying as a, as a secondary exercise. Or I think a little bit closer to a competition lift would be like a stiff-legged deadlift, um, specifically like coming to a dead stop and pulling from a dead stop off the floor. But these are good just for really overloading the posterior chain, the hamstrings, the glutes, um, the back, more so than your primary deadlift, just because you're taking the leg drive and the quads almost completely out of it. So those would be my top three secondary or um, accessory exercises. But if we move on to the next degree, which some of you might be looking for, would be tertiary exercises. And these are more, you know, supplemental in nature. They may be more like isolation or smaller joint type exercises. They can still be compound movements, but they don't have to be. And again, going back to our checking boxes, you know, analogy, these would check far fewer boxes than a secondary exercise. Um, so they would lead to theoretically less direct carryover. So for example, like if you put some weight on your single arm dumbbell row, 10 pounds, you wouldn't expect to directly get 10 pounds added on to your competition deadlift, but you would expect it to carry over at least indirectly a little bit by building up that supporting musculature. So for my top three tertiary exercises, and this one was tough for me because um, you can basically do a lot more tertiary exercises than you can primary or secondary exercises because they're less demanding, they're easier to recover from, they take less time, you can fit more of them in a single session. But if I had to go with three, I'm gonna go with, actually number one would be lunges. And I think that just from a hypertrophy standpoint of the lower body, you know, you're really hitting glutes, quads, and hamstrings, obviously your primary movers for the deadlift through a really big range of motion. And then also from a health, and sort of stability of the joint standpoint. It's a unilateral movement, um, sort of an extension of the gait cycle, and just an overall good lower body primary exercise. Um, so that would definitely be my number one, or at least some derivative of lunging. Number two, um, now this was close, but I went with chin-ups, specifically with a supinated grip, over like a row variation because I'm not downplaying the importance of the lats in the deadlift, I think they're extremely important, but the chin-ups or even pull-ups having the added advantage of almost like a shoulder health perspective. So you're training that lat through a very full range of motion, an even bigger range of motion than any kind of row when you do a chin-up. And then specifically the supinated grip because you are challenging that shoulder into external rotation at the very top and getting a little bit of that bicep as well. So when we speak about deadlifting with a mixed grip, it's important to be able to have that external rotation at the shoulder so that you don't get any rounding or um, torsional forces basically going through that bicep, which could result in injury to it in a mixed grip. So kind of a convoluted answer, but that's why I went with chin-ups as my second exercise there. And then number three would have to be some kind of hamstring curl. And you know, it's sort of preference as to what kind you like, although there is some difference between them, but like a leg curl machine, seated or prone, a glute ham raise, or my favorite would probably be a derivative like a, of a Nordic hamstring curl. But basically training those hamstrings and maybe even the glutes and, and calves as well, but primarily the hamstrings in a different way than you are in your competition deadlift and uh, training them at a different, uh, not only different hamstring muscles, but also at a different length uh, tension relationship. So those would be my top three tertiary exercises. And obviously there's plenty of both categories that I didn't mention, um, you know, block pulls, barbell rows, various accommodating resistance exercises. 
but if I were on a deserted island and I could only pick three from each category, I'm sticking with these three for each one. So um, let me know your guys' thoughts. Let me know if I missed any of your favorites and what your top three deadlift accessory exercises are in the comments below. And thanks for tuning in. I'll see you next time.